Number 6. The sun, in general, gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to figure out the angle between the sticks, and once you add in how far apart they are, you can calculate the Earth's curvature. Okay, this is basically a repackaged version of the Eratosthenes experiment, where and other people have used this one uh, on a number of similar videos to this one. In fact, there's the famous Carl Sagan one where he does the whole thing. And I'm going, well, yeah, okay. If you assume you have a distant stationary sun, and that distant stationary sh sun is shining straight down on, let's say, a stick or an obelisk, so there's hardly any shadow at all. The shadow is like, you know, right in line with the pole itself going into the ground. And then, you know, at some distance, you know, let's say to the north, there's another obelisk or stick in the ground. And you know the distance between the two. And that one's casting a longer shadow. Well, you'd say, well, the only way that's possible is if the Earth is on a globe. Reasonable assumption. And actually, as a mathematician, it was a, a brilliant deduction. And for him to figure it out and, you know, do the math. And as I understand it, he came up pretty darn close to the accepted circumference of the earth today back in like 200 bc something like that okay that's a reasonable assumption however the same thing works if you've got a sun that's small and localized and moving over the earth that you could get a shadow like that i mean i created this model right here that shows exactly that you know if they got the little point light over an obelisk here. Then I move it over and look at how the shadows change, boys and girls. It doesn't require the Earth to be a globe. It's a reasonable deduction looking at the evidence depending on your preconceived bias. So we're 50-50 on this one, uh, but I don't consider it a conclusive proof.